Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to Ruby Art Gallery for the uh, rece opening reception for uh, uh, the Intertidal Zone, produced by Doug Gilbert. Uh, I think we're very honored today to have uh, Doug here to uh, give us a, a talk about his work, about his process, uh, what inspires him, and how he goes about creating his art. So, as opposed to listening to me, uh, I'm going to go on and on about uh, how great Doug's work is. I'll let him uh, tell you all about himself. So, Doug, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. And I'm going to be standing beside you recording for so. <laughs> our programmers. Um, great. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here, and I'm really uh, appreciative to have the opportunity to have the show here. And so, just to begin, I really want to thank uh, uh, Darren. Maybe I'll start in order. I'll just <laughs> I'll thank Bob McIntyre, the preparator. Uh, here uh, at the gallery, who brought my work to Darren's attention, and this show sort of developed between the two of them and then being in touch with me, and uh, Darren, the director and curator of this exhibition and others here, um, has been really fabulous to work with. We've done everything through email, and I, um, I mean, as an artist, it was just a wonderful way to get to work. Uh, they, they said, send print work, don't frame it, roll it up, we'll pay for the shipping, it will arrive, we'll photograph it, we'll frame it, which Bob did, uh, we'll produce a catalog, um, we will install the show, and then we'd like to fly you out so that you can talk to a few people that assemble for a short period of time. So I'm, I'm really very grateful for this opportunity, uh, and uh, for the gallery, but specifically you guys, and Sharon Callis, who's here as well, uh, program person? Uh, fine arts programmer. Fine arts sure. programmer, yes. yeah. Um, <laughs> through email became my social convener, uh, which uh, meant mostly yesterday that uh, she and uh, my old friend Karen Barnaby, who is also a friend of Sharon's, uh, we all connected, went to Stanley Park yesterday and scavenged for kelp in the rain and built uh, Karen's car with it, brought it back here. And it was sort of a crochet bee um, where we worked with all kinds of materials. Because although this is a print show, um, so thanks for that, Sharon, too. You're was, I met a lot of artists in the community uh, working sort of similar ways with interest in the ocean and with some of the you know, textile overlapping interests that I have as well. Um, and uh, so, in terms of an artist talk, you're a small for me, diverse group. Some of you I know really well. I have dear cousins here. Uh, um, a couple of friends from my youth, uh, my young days in Vancouver. I lived here uh, in my 20s. And uh, um, people who I've never met before, and I'm delighted that you're here. <laughs> so I don't know your backgrounds or what your particular interests are. So I think what I'd like to do is uh, talk a little bit, introducing myself and some of my you know, some of what I have to say about the work and, and hopefully, you know, some of the bits and ways in and sort of anecdotal stuff. Um, and it won't be, I hope, too dry or conceptual, but also if, uh, I think maybe I'll talk for a little bit and, and leave a little bit of room so that if people have specific questions, because it could be if anybody's, you know, specifically interested in some aspect of technique or, you know, well, why did you do that anyway? But basically, for an artist talk, I always think that uh, there are several questions that you know could conceivably be answered, and were probably good ones. Just very generic kinds of questions, like, like who am I, and what do I do, and how do I do it, and why do I do it? I would think those are sort of the questions <coughs> in an artist talk that hopefully, in some way or other, we get around to. So, some of you, my family, and some old friends. Um, know too much about who I am already, <laughs> but uh, just very briefly, um, working with students a little bit in the last few years and that idea of being able to, you know, what do you do and how do you present it and what are the few words that you can do to invite people in and to give people some idea because the sort of the, the artist's statement um, becomes like an important kind of document and it's sort of how can you keep people's attention long enough to get through it and have it resonate so that they'll um, want to hang out and uh, maybe visit the work or give you a grant or put you on a short list for a show or whatever. Um, so 
I sort of looked at the art statement that I recently have been sending around, uh, which used to be start with like a paragraph or two of like, you know, sort of like this text piece over here. When I was a kid, it always, you know, I'd have to like go back to the beginning and sort of drag everything. I feel like to talk about the work that I'm, that I'm doing at any given point, I need you to like look at everything that I've ever done before, else you won't get it. Um, but uh, my, in my art statement, the introduction part, and I have it sort of here, I just sort of wrote it, rewrote it, and basically I said then, for the who am, the who, who I am part, it's, I live in Toronto, I return each year to my native coast of Nova Scotia. So, that's the simple answer to who I am. I'm a visual artist who sort of stumbled my way into the visual arts. I don't come from um, even a, an art school background, let alone uh, an academic background. Um, I sort of, uh, people would say I guess self-taught, but self-taught in as much as uh, I've learned so much from the experience and technical generosity and conceptual discussion with artists and colleagues and friends over the years who I've, I've always been sort of hungry to know how to make things and why we make them and where they come from and uh, people sort of pointing out who has done things in the past and uh, um, how I can access that to move forward. So, you know, I've gone from uh, um, sort of really basic thing making in, in my youth and uh, sort of the most uh, sort of accessible of craft-based uh, work um, and illustration and sort of chewed my way through modern art and contemporary art. And uh, now I'm finding myself sort of straddling worlds that uh, are print media and uh, textile, um, which sort of sculptural installation. Um, but here we have a print show, and, uh, which in the last few years has been less the case for me because the print has been included in the shows, but it's been much more in relation to a lot more of the sculptural activity. Uh, so in terms of Darren's curation, and you know, in terms of you know, how he chose from what I sent, I was uh, I'm very happy to have any and all of it here, but having one of my nets doily uh, here really means a lot to me. And, uh, it really does inform, there's a real dialogue for me between all of the print work and the sculptural work. And also to have the text-based piece just sort of over here as well, which is the early, sort of the earliest of the prints that's here in the show. And it harkens back to um, sort of earlier times when I was carving a lot of erasers. So there was relief print work, a lot of relief print work that was carved erasers. and. Uh, at that point, um, for this piece, I actually carved an alphabet because I had this um, anecdote, this story, this, you know, one of those my father stories that I wanted to tell. And so I carved an alphabet for it and, uh, and did, did a print um, with the story using the alphabet. And uh, this, though, is, uh, I photographed that and translated it uh, to the silk screen to uh, screen and uh, I think I reduced the scale of it at that point so that this story could become more of an addition piece that would get out into the world. More like a broadsheet, sort of a story that I could, you know, on occasion fold out, put in an envelope, send off to somebody, um, you know, stick it on the fridge or whatever. But for me to have that story here in the context of uh, this show and, you know, across the country from where our work really comes from now, uh, it's really great. and. Uh, so sort of moving you know, sideways or across from there, then this uh, work, the etchings, the Intaglio prints, um, they would have chronologically come next. And uh, although I'm still working with Intaglio um, and screen print and I'm crocheting and I draw obsessively. So uh, my sort of whole work process is to be busy, busy, busy <laughs> all the time. Uh, and it is obsessive and it's, uh, I guess, sort of therapeutic, but um, it's more contemplative, really, than meditative, the work that I do. And um, over the years, the literal imagery, because I used to draw and paint, you know, very, very literally, I would draw, you know, the figure, I did a lot of, like, self-portraiture, um, there was a year that I just drew trees, um, but there was always uh, an organic element, and 
usually it was uh, it became over the years that it was more um, sort of getting into the intertidal zone. Um, the stretch of shore between high tide and low tide became a place that um, I found was the source for me. So I was born in Nova Scotia and I grew up there. I was actually born um, in quite a rural part of coastal Nova Scotia, um, which I'm grateful for, but I was really only there for the first two years of my life. So I, I, my family moved to Halifax. And since then, my prime residence has always been in a city. So I, you know, I, I grew up in Halifax, and then I moved to Vancouver when I was in Vancouver. I was mostly in Vancouver, but had the opportunity to go to the Sunshine Coast with friends, hang out on the shore there. And now I live and have for, I guess, the last 30 years or so in downtown Toronto. But the counterbalance for that has been to go back to Nova Scotia, um, where I've had a really small, solo, token place fabulous little box that I get to keep things in that's uh, on a stretch of the shore where I just happen to breathe the best anywhere that I've ever been. So it's a really um, powerful and um, um, significant place for me to be. It's where, where I just feel um, in my element. And so I've been going back there for about 22 years now, every summer. And it's been my bargain with Toronto too. It's like I have a very um, I'm sort of a squat in Toronto, um, where it's like a s small studio that has more like the hot plate in the bed rather than um, the you know the apartment with the studio corner, and uh, and it's great and I love it in the winter. It's sort of a cave that I can work in and be you know complete in. But in the su <clears throat> in the summer, um, I you know it's out of town, get to the ocean, and uh, no looking back. Um, so I am returning here. I sort of, I, I, I always sort of lead, lead a sort of circular route, and uh, sometimes I'll reach a dead end, but usually I loop back to wherever I was before. Um, and uh, so I was wanting to get into this kind of languaging that um, that started to develop, and it it also sort of grew out of.